Let's talk about question seven, which tells us that we're currently in Denville, and then we are in this ball game, it seems, where we have to transmit a lot of different balls between different characters, and the transition of the amount of balls from each character is notated by this directed graph here, which we will observe later. But for now, part A tells us that the state of this ball transmitting system game will be expressed as the state vector x of t, which is having the components xb, xa, and xi. And now we have to write out a transition matrix such that the transition matrix tells us how the transformation works with regards to the way we express the state of the system. So in other words, I need a, I need a transition matrix t such that when it's multiplied by this vector x of t, which will write out its components, which will be xbt, xat, and xit, respectively standing for the amount of balls that Baljeet, Addison, and Isabella currently have, is equal to the amount of balls they have in the next time step. So I can also write it in terms of this components. And as a single vector, we will express it as x of t plus 1. So in order to do this, I first need to figure out the transition matrix content, which, while it's observable from the graph here with these all these decimal numbers, I have a trick up my sleeve that I usually use for this type of question, which is that I write the transition matrix just three by three square matrix due to us having three state variables, we have something to the contents of this. So I know that we need to draw a dash line box here, which means it's not complete, which means it's not contained in the expression for T. But I know that I'm going to multiply this matrix by this vector so that the result will then give me the result of the next time step Essentially, we're just re rewriting the equation we had above. So that means I will need some amount of B, which is the amount of balls Belgique gives to himself. I need the amount of balls that Addison will give to Baljeet. I also need to have the amount of balls that Isabella, Isabella will give to Baljeet, such that I multiply the amount of balls Baljeet is going to give himself by the current amount of balls it has, so I get the fraction of balls from Bel G that's going to Bel G, which I'll write to be xb of t plus one is equal to the amount of the fraction of balls Bel G is going to give himself times the current amount of balls Bel G has, plus the fraction of balls that Addison has, the uh, the fraction of balls in Addison's balls that's going to be transmitted to Baljeet, which means it will be the fraction of balls from Addison going to Baljeet times the amount of balls out, uh, Addison has. And then at last I need to add the fraction of balls from Isabella to Baljeet multiplied by the current amount of balls that Isabella has, which is denoted by x i of t. And then for the following roles, I do something very similar. I need the amount of I need the fraction of balls going from Belgium to Addison. I need the fraction of balls going from Addison to himself. I need the fraction of balls going from Isabella to Addison. And for the last row, I repeat this pattern. So the reason why I'm writing out the transition matrix element like this is because, first of all, it's very easy to memorize. We see that there is a column-wise pattern where the first column has to be the fraction of balls from Belgium to someone, and that is because the first the first state the, the first state variable we're multiplying in this x of t state vector happens to be the amount of balls that Belgium has. And while it has a really easy to remember pattern, it's also really easy to reference across graphs. Because for now I can just reference the graph I have here and write out the contents of t which I will write here in blue mark. So the amount of balls that Belgi is giving to himself is 0 0.3, which means he's giving 3, 0 0.3 amount of balls he has to himself. And I also note that Belgi is giving 0 0.1 of his balls to Isabella while giving 0 0.2 to Addison. 
Okay, and I need the amount of bowls that Addison is giving to Baljeet, which is 0 0.4, giving to himself is 0 0.5, and giving to himself is 0 0.3. Okay, and then I just follow the instructions I did before, fill out that matrix, and now I have the transition. Now, now I have the transition matrix T. We can do a verification on whether this is right. So let me drag this down here because this is going to be a very important equation that we can cross-reference. Say I have the current amount of balls each character has again here. And now I'm going to try to calculate the amount of balls that Belgium will have in the next turn. And again, I'm just rewriting the equation above to reiterate what I have said orally. So I know that in the next term, Belgique's balls will be equivalent to the amount of Belgique's, uh, will be amount, will be equivalent to the sum of 0 0.3 of current, uh, of Belgique's balls his, he currently has, which is written here. I also need, I also know that it will be added by the amount of balls that Addison is going to give to Belgique, which is 0 0.4 of Addison's current possession which is written here. And then it will also be added by 0 0.1 times the current amount of balls Isabella possesses. So 0 0.1 of Is Isabella's balls is going to Belgique. I know that through the secret art of matrix multiplication, which is called like this, like that, the amount of balls that Belgique will have next turn is equivalent to this linear, uh, is equivalent to the sum of products that I currently stated from the graph. So I know that this transform so I know that this transition matrix seems to be the correct one. So let me just erase these and keep the answer here. Okay, so now that we have solved the first part of the question, we can move on to the second one. Suppose that instead the transition matrix we have is something that follows the line of this, is this matrix conservative? So we'll have to remind ourselves of what does a conservative matrix stand for. If a matrix, if a state transition matrix is conservative, all columns must add up to one. And the reason why all columns must add up to one is because, as we stated before, the, the sum of each column stands for the amount of balls from each character that's staying in the system for the next turn. So for example, if we refer back to part A, we see that the transition matrix tells us that 0.3 of Belgi's ball is going to himself, 0.2 of it is going to Addison, 0.1 is going to Isabella, but the rest 0.4 is going to be gone. It's going to be drained in other terms, which means it's not staying in the system. However, the definition of a conservative system is such that everything I have in the last step of the system must be kept to the current step. And then in this case, we see from the first column that whoever the first character is, we have lost half of this character's balls, which means the system is not conservative. So the matrix is not conservative because not every column adds up to one or because all columns add up to one or because that we can explain it in the other way, some balls are lost in the next step. And the fact that some balls are lost in the next step comes from the fact that not all columns in this matrix add up to one. So now well, let's move on to part C of the question, which tells us that there is this new trans uh, transition matrix called B with eigenvalues and eigenvectors given to us. So given x is equal to 3 to 0, does the limit of n approaching infinity B to n x converge? So in other words, we are being asked, does the steady state distribution, which will be something like this, the limit of n approaching infinity x of n, converge. So do we have a steady state distribution available? So to do that, we need to first figure out how do we actually compute b to the n times x. And the way we, and the way we can do that is, let's first notice some minor patterns, which is that 
B, let's say BV1 is equal to lambda 1 V1, which is given by the eigenvalue eigenvector relationship. B square V1 is equal to B times B times V1. And then I'm just going to use the rules of matrix multiplication. So it's equal to B times BV1, which is equal to B lambda 1 V1. And then that's equal to lambda 1 BV1, which is equal to lambda 1 square V1. And as we keep going uh, over this pattern, we'll see that b to the n times v1 is equal to lambda 1 to the n power times v1. And then since matrix transformations are linear transformations, I can just say that b v1 plus v2 plus v3 or b to the n v1 plus v2 plus v3 is equal to lambda 1 to the n power plus times v1 plus lambda 2 to the n power times v2 plus lambda 3 to the n power times v3. And then I can now express 3 to 0 as a linear combination of the eigenvectors such that I can use this equation I use above, which is b to the n times a linear combination of the eigenvectors. And then that way I can get b to the n power times x. And then we'll also have to re remember the limit notation later, but let's do that in a math step. We need to first figure out how to express x the vector x as a linear combination of alpha uh, of v1, v2, and v3. So now we're going back to a really similar question as before when we're in this when we're when we're in the question four where it talks about the Eurovision Song Contest is that we need to find the eigen we need to find the vectors x as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. The surefire way again is that we construct a Gaussian elimination system, which means we write the system to be something like this, right? Where V1, V2, and V3 are eigenvectors and thus columns of a matrix. And we try to use Gaussian elimination to solve for alpha, beta, or gamma. Or in this case, there's, an, uh, there's a quicker way. So first I noticed that the vector X third component is zero. And it also happens that there's only one eigenvector whose third component is not zero. So it will be nat it will be natural for me to assume that V2 is not contained in the vector X because it has a non-zero third component while X doesn't have one. And this situation is quite special because both V1 and V3 also don't have a third component that is non-zero. If one of v1 or v3 has a non-zero third component, then there's a chance that I can uh, subtract v1 by v2 or do some kind of add addition or subtraction such that the third component cancels out. And we'll still be able to assume that v2 might be contained in x. But since v2 is the only eigenvector that has a th non-zero third component, there's no way to cancel out v2 with other eigenvectors. So v2 must not be contained in x. Again, the surefire way is Gaussian elimination, which will also lead to this conclusion later, but this is just a small math mind trick that will probably help a bit on accelerating the process. So in other words, we know that 3 to 0 is equal to v1 times something plus v3 times something. We see that v3 doesn't have a second component, so that means we must have two v1, such that the second component can be kept as two. And last but not least, since there's already two v1, my first component is currently two, and I just need to add one to the first component, and that will mean I add one v3. So summing that up together, I get that this is equal to two v1 times two v1 plus v3. So now that I know that three to zero is equal to two v1 plus v3, what I can do is start computing the limits. So the limit of b to the n times x is then equal to the limit of n approaching infinity b to the n times this linear combination, which tells me via the b to the n series of equation analysis we have done before, especially with this equation, It's equal to 2 times lambda 1 to the nth power plus times v1 plus lambda 3 to the nth power times v3. And now we just have to know lambda 1 and lambda 3, which is given. So lambda 3 is equal to 1 half and lambda 1 is equal to 1. I'm going to fill in the values here. Plus 
one half to the nth power times v3. But one half to the nth power when n is approaching infinity is going to be zero. Because if I just multiply one half by itself in, for infinity times, it's going to go to zero. So I know that v3 will at last be zeroed out. And then my final answer for this is going to be two times v1 because one to the nth power, no matter what n is, is going to be one. And v1 is equal to one one zero, so two v1 is equal to two two zero. So this gives me the steady state distribution of the final amount of balls again. And so we have solved this question.